Hi class, so today I'm introducing the sewing book. It's a DK published book by Allison Smith. Uh, covers clothing, home accessories, tools, techniques, and projects. Okay, so this book will be available for reference and inspiration. Please check it out. The sewing book by Allison Smith. All right, so here's the table of contents. We're going to be focusing on tools today, sewing equipment. Um, we will be doing fabric eventually and patterns. The book also color, covers techniques, sewing essentials, darts, tucks, pleats, and gathers. That's to go over all the mounds. Facings and necklines, collars, waistbands, belts, and tie backs, sleeves, sleeves, finishes, pockets, hems, edges, fasteners, linings, interfacing, professional techniques, many, and then projects. And the projects are ranked. So a, a one star is an easy one, whereas like a four star is more difficult. The glossary is on 390 if you need to find something. 394 index. All right. Directory of Fashion and Home Goods 384. And here's the introduction. And this book. So uh, they did use contrasting thread throughout the book so that you could see where the seams are and the top stitching and whatnot. Um, the, again, the projects are graded uh, one star for simple and four or above for challenging. Uh, always cut your fabric on the straight grain and seam allowances are five eighths of an inch unless indicated. All right, they're also suggesting, which I totally agree with, that you are pressing along the way. So when you sew a seam and you uh, go over to the ironing board, you press it. It makes your garment or your, your uh, project look clean. And it's, uh, always, it's always good to see it uh, do the pressing. Alrighty, and here we go. We're gonna start with tools. So there is a lot of equipment. You need some very basic things like scissors, um, seam ripper, needles, threads, uh, and an ironing board. Obviously the sewing machine will come later. And here we go. So for our purposes, we're really only going to be using a few of these tools in the beginning. When you move on to more advanced sewing, you're gonna have a lot more. All right, we're gonna start here. We have thread, an assortment of colors. Remember, uh, when you're doing your sewing samples, you're gonna use a contrasting thread color, which means like if you're doing the, a muslin sample, you won't be using a white or a, or a uh, beige color. You'll be using uh, an assortment of colors for top thread and bottom thread. All right, we have a thimble. And what a thimble does is you put it on your finger so that when you're sewing, if you need to push your needle through a hard seam, they're not damaging your fingertip. So this is a thimble, and there it is. And next we have a measuring tape. So this measuring tape is 60 inches long, and 60 inches is five feet. You know, you're gonna be taking the measurement of um, the girth, your head, your waist, your hips, your uh, thigh, your wrist. Uh, so anyway, you wanna, uh, measuring tape nearby. We also have pins. Uh, these are our straight pins. And these you will use, I just love this, uh, you will be using the straight pins to not only pin your fabric down to your pattern, but to pin your fabric together when you're sewing. This is what I use in lieu of a pin cushion. Of course you can have a traditional pin cushion to stick your pins in. But um, with so many drops and just ease of use, I just love this. Ready? Here we go. Pins, straight pins. We'll get into using more of those. So if you drop them on the floor, you can pick them up easily. Okay. So um, how you use pins, though, I will just review that quickly. If you are going to pin a garment uh, together, pieces together, you would lay them face to face. Let's say I'm going to do a center back seam here on this uh, bodice back. I would make sure my edges are lined up and then I put the pin in and back and it lies flat. Okay. In and back. Um, not with our machines when we're sewing, but generally you can 
sew over these pins. I do want them to lie flat. Okay. So there we go. Pins. Straight pins. Okay. A seam ripper. Here's my seam ripper. It's right here. What you do is you uh, close it when you're done. But the top becomes your handle. So open it. And this is how you use a seam ripper. Let's say you make a hem and you don't, you know, you need to take it out. Well, then you can go in with your seam ripper and gently rip the seam out. And then you can uh, pull it, you can go to the back side and you can, you know, I use a little combination of pulling it unless it's a delicate fabric and ripping it, taking my seam ripper. It can take a lot of time, so you want to be careful, but but you use your seam ripper to do that. So on this muslin, it's okay if I jerk, jerk it around. Um, also, you can open these kind of seams. So here we have, again, our back stitch. Uh, you could split the seam a little bit like that and just come right up. The problem is you want to be careful you don't get the fabric in there. And your seam ripper just gets in there and takes out those threads. Okay, seam ripper. Okay, another thing that is on here are your cutting shears. So cutting shears, uh, you need to have a comfortable pair and you want it to be balanced, not too heavy. Um, these are mine, I've had them for 30 something years. Never ever cut paper with these um, because you will dull the blade, all right? And you want to have available when you're sewing or doing embroidery, uh, embroidery scissors. They're helpful to trim threads close to the fabric without damaging. It's obviously much closer to, easier to see. Okay, when you're using these scissors, your shears, a general rule of sewing, I mean cutting, you keep your, the scissors, your shears on the ground and you move, well, this is a small one, but if I was using a real size pattern, I would, again, just leave my the bottom of my scissors on the hard surface and cut along, All right? So cutting shears. And when you are walking with scissors, you want to make sure that you always are holding them with the tip down. That means you're walking, you're holding them down. Do, 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 you don't hold them out. Hold them up, you hold them straight down. All right, this is a sewing gauge. It's a handy tool for um, measuring hem depth, buttonholes, and more. And this is basically, oh, the last thing we have here is needles. So my needles are mixed up with my straight pins. So basically, you have different size needles. You have uh, needles with larger eyes and you have smaller, depending on what you're doing, fabric-wise, sewing, you can use a whatever size needle you need, okay? There are lug needles, there are chiffon needles, there's just assortment of needles. All right, so this is the basics. These are the basics that you will need. Um, this uh, little buttonhole cutter punctures the hole in the middle, but um, we're not really gonna be using that right now. You can just use your, your little, uh, embroidery shears to cut open or snip in if you need to open a buttonhole. So here we go. Now these are all cutting tools. So we just spoke about the seam ripper. Okay, it's to cut threads, right? Um, if you were in production, if you were in a, uh, working in production and you were finishing the garments, pressing them and trimming all the threads or sitting on a machine, you might have these little uh, snips. Okay, they're for trimming threads. And we also have, again, we have our cutting shears, which I just talked about. Those are mine. I love my shears. So use those without permission. And these are pinking shears. Okay. So pinking shears uh, give a zigzag pattern. You can use them to neaten the seams or as a decorative 
uh, edge if you are leaving the seam raw. When you cut with these, it allows the threads, it doesn't allow the threads to, uh, to shred like this. So if you, if you are finishing a seam and you don't want to do any other thing, you could use the pinking shears and come along and just trim along. And then you're not going to get all that fray that you're going to get if you don't. Okay, so pinging shears. They're fun. Okay. okay, and now this is a cutting mat. We'll use those with cyanotypes. Uh, we're probably not going to have a rotary cutter available to us. And then the last thing is, again, you always want to have paper scissors around. Because you don't want to be using your fabric scissors to... Uh, cut paper it will dull the blade all right so those are our cutting tools that we'll be using and let's see measuring tools okay we spoke about the 60 inch long measuring tape okay uh, there it is this is a flexible roller here is our sewing gauge which I'm not sure we're gonna be using in this course and then we have marking aids. So these are called Taylor chalk. And these are waxy ones. And uh, this one's a little more chalky. And this is another chalk pencil. All right, so how we use these is you basically uh, put your pattern down. Normally it's a stiff pattern and you trace around your pattern. I'll just demonstrate with my hand. Uh, you probably want to, okay, so uh, the, this is me tracing, and if I use a pencil because I have a fine or something to cut out, my chalk pencil, and there we go. All right, so it's, it's used to transfer, it's a marking aid, and obviously these come in different colors. Uh, our other one is our tracing paper. So, this is our tracing paper, this is our tracing wheel, this is what the paper looks like, and you can transfer marks from uh, one layer to the other, okay? I don't know if we'll be using these in the beginning, but it's here and we'll do something on it later. Okay, so these are the basic tools that we'll be using when we are sewing. Useful extras, I always like to have my tweezers around when I am especially threading up my overlock. And one of my most favorite tools, <laughs> I could go back a page, it's not in here, but it's an 18 inch by two inch clear roller. Um, it's divided into eighths. So this is one square, you one square. This is two, so two inches wide by 18 inches long. It's excellent because you can uh, you can add around the sides of it of, of your pattern with this. Alrighty, basic tools. What I really want you to have when you're sewing, like when you're specifically just at the machine, is your little snips, your seam ripper, and you know you're gonna need your pin cushion. Really, those are the basic things you need when you're sitting at your machine. Okay. We'll move on to needles and pins later.